Welcome back to In the Midst and another part of our marriage um, theme this month. Um, we're going to go ahead and deal with this topic of submission and living abundantly through submission. So John 10.10 10 talks about, um, it says that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. God wants us to have an abundant life. So we're gonna talk about how that works through submission in our marriage. Um, I don't think anyone says that they want their Christian life or their marriage to be boring, to be miserable, um, to be just kind of eh, okay. Like we want to thrive in our marriage and in our Christian life. So we're gonna look at how to do that through submission. I can already hear what you are thinking, especially if you are in you know normal Christian circles that, ugh, okay, but just stay with me here. Um, I promise that this will be helpful, okay? Helping others, especially other women in this area of submission is something that, you know, if you're, you've been around, you know this is my heart. I'm not perfect. I don't try to be. I don't have anything figured out. Um, if you've watched any of these videos, you know that because nothing is edited and you just never know what's gonna happen around here. But um, if I can share what I do know, what I've learned, what I've experienced, then, and that's going to help someone, then it's worth it. And I will. Um, I know that there's going to be negative comments and backlash for this. Um, someone's going to take this out of context. There's always the question on what about the narcissist? What about the abuse? When can I divorce? I'm not getting into that. Okay, we're going to look at the scripture, which says for wives to be in submission to their husband. And we're going to look at the blessing that we get from that. Okay, so just stay with me. Let's start with some basic thoughts. What is submission? We have to know what it is before we can do it. It is the act or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. Okay? You are yielding. You are willfully saying, I'm not going to do what I want. I'm going to do what you want. I'm going to meet this need. I'm going to do this how you want it to be done. Or I'm going to follow your plan. Okay? To whom or what? Should we submit? If you are a married woman, you are to submit to your husband. Children submit to their parents and to those that the parents allow to have authority, such as teachers, youth pastors, principals, all that stuff. As a citizen, you submit to the law. As an employee, you submit to your employer. So you see, we're all in submission to someone. Regardless, we are in submission, supposed to be in submission to the Lord, okay? Um, we do everything as unto the Lord. Um, giving our best, doing it joyfully, willingly. And the Bible tells us that we are to submit to our husbands as unto the Lord. So this is an avenue of service to God, okay? Um, submission has positive and negative consequences. Otherwise, everything would be unorganized chaos. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live there. So... Why should we submit to various authorities? Usually we do this to avoid the negative consequences, consequences, such as losing a job, getting a speeding ticket, or getting arrested. That's fair, and I'm okay with that. Um, but remember that I said there's also positive consequences. So what are the good things that happen? When we submit to the authority over us, we find freedom and peace. Is there freedom within boundaries? Seems kind of like a paradox, doesn't it? Yes, there is. That's how God designed this. So what is the opposite of submission? Defiance. Simply put, you're either in obedience or you're not. You're in submission, you're in defiance, that's it. You know, we tell our kids delayed obedience is disobedience. Um, it's, it's the same thing. So submission is a choice. It's not always easy but you always have the choice to submit or not. It is an outward display of an inward decision. Um, okay. If you have decided in your heart already that you will not to not submit to God, your husband, your parents, your employer, the law, etc., whoever it is that has authority over you, then that will be clearly evident to those around you. Defiance is not done in secret at all. Um, it is sin. Your sin will find you out, and your sin affects others. It is infectious. You will rub off on other people, and you will be a stumbling block to them and encourage them to sin. 
So the opposite of that is all also true. When you live in obedience to the Lord, you live, you know, your best trying to honor him, his word, do what he's asked you to do, giving praise and glory to him, that is also infectious. And other people want to be around that. And that encourages them, that edifies them, that provokes them to love and good works. Okay, that's what we're supposed to do as a Christian. Um, so the number one comment that I always get on this topic is, what if I get treated like a doormat and everyone walks over me? That's a natural fear. That is your flesh. Um, that is a justification to not do this. But that is also not biblical submission, okay? Um, biblical submission is not just being silent and letting everyone treat and speak to you however they wish. There is a line. But sometimes we like to live on the wrong side of that line because we don't naturally like to submit. We naturally want our own way. We want to be in control. And it's very hard to let someone else have the final say over you. Now, for some simple applications, think of your work environment. How is that environment changed when you're trying to do things a different way than what your employer requested? There's usually tension and conflict. It's not a good place. It's not comfortable. You can just feel the tension, right? What about when we defy the law? The consequence is going to be pretty intense, causing lots of problems and inconveniences in our lives. Not only our lives, others. Think of that person that's drinking and driving. You're breaking the law and you killed someone. You could have killed someone. You injured someone. You died. Okay, the person drinking and driving. So your sin does not only affect you. Okay, it affects everyone around you. And if you have children, you are setting an example to your kids. Okay, so think about what they're seeing. So our homes are not peaceful when our children are not in submission to the rules and boundaries that we've set for them. You know, when they're being defiant, they're arguing, they're constantly grounded. You know, it's, it's not a happy, peaceful place. So the same is true when we as a wife choose not to honor our husband's requests. Things get out of harmony. As parents, we teach our children by example, and our children need to see us live this out in front of them. They are not just going to naturally know how to submit or want to submit. They're not just going to think that it works um, when, they, when they've never seen it played out. It's vital in teaching them the importance and consequences of submission to all authority, okay? Your kids have to learn that they don't run the world. If you're not choosing to submit, then you are choosing defiance. That's it. There's no middle ground. This brings conflict, opposition, and unrest into the home, which is where I would like to bring your focus for a few moments. I hope no one is striving for contentious homes. Submission to your husband might be a new concept to you, and if it is, that is okay. I get it. We all weren't raised the same. We weren't raised in church. Um, you might not have been raised in a two-parent home, a happy two-parent home. Um, you might have never even seen what this looks like healthily lived out, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that you can't do it. It's never too late to learn and make those changes. There's always growth and room for growth and improvement in marriage. Breaking this cycle is always an option. So start today with trying to be better examples than what you had growing up. Give your children better examples in a happier home. Right now, you might be asking if the submission thing really works because it seems counterproductive that someone else is making choices and decisions and I'm supposed to be happy. You just stick with me here, okay? Um, you might be curious as to how I know if it works or not. So I'm gonna share a little more of myself with you. Um, like I said in the last video, I wasn't raised in church at all. Um, the first little bit of little bit of our marriage was rough because I didn't fully understand or accept my role as a wife and mother. I was 15 years old. There was a lot of changes. Um, not being raised in church, not seeing this completely lived out. My parents didn't really argue, um, but the word submit was never, you know, said or talked about. It was always respect. Um, that's what my, my dad was big on being um, born in the 60s, raised in the 70s and 80s. Um, that was the big buzzword, you know, then you were just demanded to respect anyone in authority over you. And I get it. Um, but I wasn't taught why I wasn't taught from a biblical standpoint. I wasn't taught, you know, the responsibilities that I had other than cook clean and that's it. Like, um, I feel like a lot of the times we are taught to be housekeepers, being a mom kind of comes naturally with those, um, instincts and stuff but being a wife I don't feel like we're really like taught how to do that we're not really taught how to communicate we're not taught um you know as a little girl being not raised in church um 
I wasn't taught, you know, to do anything unto the Lord. I wasn't taught that my husband had this godly authority and godly responsibility placed on him. If he has the responsibility, he has to have the authority to make the decision. You know, I can't say it's your responsibility to make this happen, but I'm not going to let it happen and I'm going to come over here. You can't have both, okay? And I hope that makes sense. I love being a wife and a mom. I did, but I had a lot to learn. And by God's grace, 14 years later, here we are. Um, and all that time, divorce has not been mentioned. I don't believe in luck. I believe in following God's blueprint because it works. Um, we've been in church almost all of our marriage. There was maybe a year total in the 14 years we've been married that we weren't in church. We had a long seven month stretch. We weren't in church at all. We had moved states. Um, and I worked nights. My husband worked days. We barely saw each other. We only slept together two nights a week because I worked overnights. Um, it was hard. I had a one and a half year old. Um, it was hard. It was a lot. Don't recommend, okay? But if you're still not sure, um, let's look at the opposite of God's design, which is the world, society, Hollywood, all the things that we see from everyone else. Um, we see in society sitcoms, commercials, memes, making fun of the traditional home, especially the husband. Husbands are portrayed as the big idiot that everyone laughs at. He's the butt of the joke. He's never taken seriously. He's not respected. He's not looked at as an authority figure. If you don't respect your husband, no one else is going to either, especially your children. As a result, the children do not respect his authority or really any authority. With authority comes responsibility and accountability. Like I said, your husband cannot be held accountable and responsible for the home if he's not given authority to make those final decisions. Um, also, if you are in church, um, your husband can't be a deacon if you're not in submission to him. If he can't rule his own house, he can't rule the, in the house of God. Um, so you can hinder his ministry like this. Um, so just think about that. Check your heart. You know, don't let your pride get in the way. Ask the Lord, Lord, is there something that I need to do somewhere? I need to change a place that I'm not submitting to you or to my husband. Ask your husband nicely, calmly. Don't turn this into an argument and say one thing. <laughs> okay. You can't give me a list and beat me up. That's what I tell my husband. Don't beat me up. Um, Give me one, maybe two things that you don't feel like I submit to you and like I should. That you've asked me to stop and I don't. That you want me to do that I don't. Um, you don't like the certain way that I do things, whatever. Let him give you one or two things and just say, thank you. And write that on your prayer list. Find a Bible verse. Does the, the scripture support that? Is this preference? I am 110% for talking, negotiating, compromising, coming to an agreement, okay? He is not to be a dictator, okay? Some of you, unfortunately, have married that man. Pray, okay? That's, that's all I got to say for that right now. Um, but you can make this work, okay? So one thing for us, my husband does not like clutter. Neither one of us like clutter. He doesn't really see dirt. He sees clutter. Um, so he doesn't like a lot of things on the countertops, which the counters, the kitchen table, everything becomes a catch-all. People come in and just drop stuff, and I'm having to go back and clean it up or tell somebody to come get the junk. Um, this is something that I have to try to stay on top of. Um, a big thing for him is the kitchen. He doesn't like clutter on the kitchen counters. We don't have a lot of counter space. Um, right now, we are renting a single-wide trailer, so it's like a galley-style kitchen. You walk from the living room to the dining room to the kitchen and on through to our bedroom, and there's not a lot of counter space in there, and he doesn't like it to be cluttered. So, the microwave is on the counter, which takes up a lot of space. He's okay with my Keurig being out, and he's okay with my KitchenAid being out. That's really all he wants out. And most of you right then just said it's not his kitchen. What does he care? That is not a submissive attitude, okay? Is it really a big deal for me to put stuff up somewhere else? No. It's not. Why do I have to have clutter? Why do I have to have everything in and you know, finger length away, just because it's convenient, it's easy, I like it. Is it really a big deal? No, it's not. So sometimes we have to compromise and say, you're right, it's not a big deal, I will put that up. Um, and I do, I got a dish mat, one of the you know little drying mats instead of the big drainer, because he didn't like the big strainer or drainer thing. Um, so I got a dish mat, and so I, the few dishes that I have to hand wash, I let dry. Um, 
I let them hang out there and then I had the kids put it up and put the mat away and the kitchen counter is open again. Cause that's like where the microwave is and that mat and then the sink, like that's all the counter space, you know, on that side of the sink. So that's something that it's not a big deal. Just put stuff up. Or are we really arguing about this because it's my kitchen and I do all the cooking and cleaning? We sound so selfish, okay? Um, so just look at this from his perspective. Look at this biblically. Look at this in the grand scheme of things. Are we really arguing over kitchen counters? This is not a big deal, okay? The good news about all of this is that this is a choice. Submission and respect are choices that you have the power to make regardless of any other factor. This is very powerful once you get a hold of it, that nothing else you have complete control of whether you're going to respect and submit to your husband. You get to model this for your children. Your husband might have a powerful position at work where others respect him, submit to his authority, but I promise you it does not even come close in comparison to what he gets from you as his wife. You are the only one who can rightfully be his biggest supporter. He needs that from you more than anyone else. Others can take this position, but you shouldn't let them. You get to do this. Remember the difference in getting and having? You get to do this. This is a positive change that you can absolutely make in your home starting today. It will have more reward and blessing than you can imagine. It doesn't happen overnight, but you have to start somewhere. He might not even notice, but you have to start. And even if he doesn't notice, the Lord does. That's where our reward comes from, okay? When you are submissive to your husband, as unto the Lord, trying to serve the Lord through this avenue of your husband, we experience the abundant life. That is where we get the blessings and joy of the Lord. And, you know, we're not bitter about cleaning those toilets anymore, you know, and God just has a way of giving us joy in those simple, mundane things. A second question that I get is, but what if my husband doesn't deserve my respect? Okay, let's look at that. Have you had that thought yet through all of this or through your marriage at all? I think it's a natural thought. Our husbands aren't perfect, but you're not either. What if your husband said, she doesn't deserve me to love her? We easily say, you're supposed to love me like your own self, like Christ loved the church, sacrificial, unconditional. Okay, why don't you respect him like that? We look for justification not to be respectful because we don't want to be. Can I share something with you though? God's already made that decision for you. He said, respect your husband, okay? You don't have to decide. It takes too much time for our limited perspectives, imperfect thinking to judge someone else, our husband, and decide to keep score, to decide if he's done enough good to deserve our respect or not. That scale of yes, he does, no, he doesn't, it's going to change every day based on our emotions. That's not fair to him. Some of you, he will never measure up. And you just, well, I don't have to. Yes, you do. That is what the Lord said. It's already been made for you. It's part of the blueprint that God has given in his word. Why did he do that? Because we all have a dozen reasons not to do it from our own standpoint. Our husbands aren't perfect but God has already made that decision for you on whether they deserve your respect and submission or not. Um, Ephesians 5.33 is a very good place to go. Um, Ephesians 5, Colossians 3. Um, you know, God has this in his blueprint for a reason. You have a choice on how you view and react to your husband. Your choice will influence how others treat and view him as well. It starts with you. Set the bar, okay? Respect, honor your husband, submit to him as unto the Lord. And if you feel like he's wrong about something, have a conversation. Ask why. Why do you feel this way? Why do you want to do this? What are you thinking? Um, pray about it on your own, together. Lord, guide him. You should be praying that every single day, and we'll get into that later. Pray for protection. Pray for the Lord to work in his heart to lead and guide him and help him as he leads your family, okay? Okay. Um, Trust the Lord with this um, before there's a bunch of negative comments and you tune me out. Take it to the Lord. Research for yourself in God's word what he says about it um, and pray. Ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? 
it's too easy to pray, Lord, fix my husband. We don't ever want to pray, Lord, help me, okay? Stay in the Word, stay close to the shepherd, and let him lead you in paths of righteousness.